I just went through a lot of difficult things, a lot of things that we were dealing with that we didn't understand at the time. My daughter was just diagnosed with a heart condition. Things just started to just go really wrong. A lot of shame, a lot of condemnation for just making just bad and bad and bad decisions. All these things that were just coming against my family and I had no one to come to save all of us and I couldn't do anything. My name is Kelly Yanis, and I would like to share with you my story. I was born in Venezuela with a family of a brother and a sister. My parents were Catholic, and I knew about God and I knew about Jesus, but I didn't have any relationship with God. Because of that, uh, when I was little, I just went through a lot of difficult things. By the time that I was born, when I was four years old, um, my mom always shared this story about my dad receives a phone call for a neighbor and said, your daughter, said, something's going on because your daughter has been crying a night and a day, and I just feel this crying of your daughter all the time. So then my mom and dad, they just kept asking me, what's going on, my daughter? Is everything okay? And I was just four years old at the time. I came to tell them that the babysitter that was taking care of me was just being abusive and just molesting me. But because of my grandmother and because of uh, her quick reaction, my parents were able to take this person away from my life. When I was 16 years old, um, I had an inclination to study international business and I decided to go to the U.S., to move to the U.S. from Venezuela to study English. That's something that I wanted to do and international thing was something that was in my heart. Soon enough, I moved to the U.S. I met um, who is now my husband and five years into dating him, we decided to get married. We had the nice cars out there. I was doing good in, in business. I was a, a mortgage consultant. I get pregnant uh, with my first son and we were so happy. And at the time I was just really looking for the medic American dream. Just um, getting married, uh, buying a house, um, buying a car. We were still kind of going to the Catholic Church maybe once a year or twice a year just to say yeah we're good we're part of a church just to have a checkup mark of yes we're good because we have a church that we go to maybe once a year and yet still there was something that I feel like I was still empty and we struggled with um, there was a lot of bad decisions my husband was spending a lot of time on his work, again, just trying to make uh, more money. And then he decided to have an affair at work. And that was a really hard time in my life because what I thought that I had built in this country, where I came and I spent all my efforts into working and supporting a family was now being shaken. And I had no solid foundation. I had nothing to hang on to. And then I ended up making another bad decision, which was to have an affair. And we were still trying to work our marriage out. And that bad decision ended up with another bad decision, which was to end up having an abortion. I just struggled with a lot of shame, a lot of condemnation, just a lot of ugliness for just making just bad and bad and bad decisions and yet I still wanted to do good. I still wanted to save my marriage. I still wanted to have a good family for my children. Just things that I now see that operated in my family that were not in order because of us not having an understanding who was our solid foundation or what was the solid foundation in our marriage. So even with the bad decisions, we still try to work it uh, together and I end up having my other son and my daughter and then um, a close family, a relative that was here in the U.S. Uh, she became really sick with a virus and um, I remember her 
just being a single mom with three kids and being in the hospital, just basically surviving for life. The pastor who I met at the hospital where she was struggling for life, he invited us. He, they, he just seemed very sweet and, and very loving and he invited us to come into this church. When I came into this church, it felt very different from the Catholic church that I was going to. Looked around and they were all lifting their hands and just singing. And it just felt really good. And I said, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna lift my hands and sing. And I have felt many, many things at the time, but the fire that I felt in that moment in that church as I lifted my hands was a presence of God that came and touched me and I was never the same. I remember the pastor saying, Jesus is coming again, Jesus is coming. At that time, I was 33 years old, and I was like, I never heard, how come I never heard that Jesus was coming back? Yeah, to me, Jesus was a man that died on the cross, and maybe if I was good, one time I would go to heaven, but the message of Jesus coming back became really strong, and I just, I just got to my house, and I, I remember looking into the Bible, and I just saying, I have to know, who Jesus is. I have to know who Jesus is. And, and I started reading the scriptures that I, in this Bible that I always just saw in my house, just basically open. And I said, Jesus, you are the savior. You are the one that can come and make all things good. And I did that and I, and I just read more of the word of God. And, and God did this thing where he started just speaking to me in dreams. And, and I would just get these dreams and the pictures overnight, and I would just see this revelation. And I just remember saying, God, you're talking to me. You are saying things. And every time I had a picture at night in a dream, I wanted to look at in the scriptures, and I just became really hungry for looking for I felt that this was all that was happening at night when I was sleeping. And even at that time when he was showing me all this, we were still going at home with so many different problems. My daughter was just diagnosed with a heart condition and the doctors were saying that we needed to do open heart surgery and she was so small and the risk of having this open heart surgery. And I remember reading in the scriptures that God saved, that God heals. And I remember there was one particular dream that he gave me in, in one night. and. There was that revelation to me in that moment that Jesus was not only the Savior, but that Jesus is the Messiah and that He has a love for His people. He has a plan for all nations, but that He also has a plan for Israel. And uh, I received an invitation for, a, a, for another church that um, was close, we were very close to my house. And in that time that I went to this other church, they were having a prayer service and and people were saying, oh, they were just praying out and just praying from the scriptures and praying their dreams and just being really open and bold. And I was like, oh, I found my place to speak the same language. These people have dreams, they're open the same way that I am. And this pastor that has a Jewish background, he came and he greeted me and he's like, oh, I'm so glad that you're here. And he just prayed over me. And I just felt this connection with this church that now they spoke the same language. They also dream and they also have love for Israel. And they speak about Yeshua the same way that I do. And, and they're like, now they're like my family. And it's the spirit of power that comes and makes us his witnesses. And it's that same power that has saved my life, that has saved my family, that has saved my marriage, that has saved the life of my children. I've seen my daughter completely heal and, and from a heart condition. And I've seen my son, who is also diagnosed with epilepsy, completely heal because I believe everything that God said. So I'm sharing this with you to tell you, if you're suffering, if you're struggling with your marriage, if you're struggling with a disease or for yourself or for your children, 
or if you are in fear, or if you are uh, desperate, you know, call out to Jesus, call out to Yeshua, and invite Him into your heart. His Spirit will come into you and will empower you and will give you the peace and will deliver you and will protect you and will cover you and, and will give you the healing that you need. He said, call out to me and I will answer. This is just an invitation for what he's done in my life, in the life of my children, my family, that he does it to you as well. Shalom.